because the marriages were so much about the men and having babies who are sons and that they're pushed into this relationship where another woman becomes your best friend and your sister and you commit to that for your whole life, for eternity actually, in, in the contract that they sign. The new su is interesting also because of the need to communicate and perhaps the need to communicate more secretly they develop their own language that, that's being used between these women. And a lot of times it's just written on paper, sometimes when it's more rarefied or they find a more precious moment, they would you know, write on a fan or embroider on a fan. They're like songs and poetry. They're not like detailed you know, narrative. But the songs and poetry tell you a lot. And this language is pretty special. I found out just recently that the language is based on a lot of graphic visual elements that these women had. Like, if you look at the blue and white tie-dye that was very, that's still very popular, you know, from China, you know, a lot of the patterns is maybe the source for this language, because it doesn't look like any ancient language. It looks like something graphic on its own. And it's very feminine looking because the brush strokes are not strong and, and, and hard. They're very soft and flowing. So it's their own kind of texting and emoticons. Yes, exactly. I mean, we were talking to a lot of the young kids today, and they say, oh, we text each other you know, on our phones with our own language. And that's exactly what it is today with these kids in so, China. So to create a channel that is totally private, yes. and that the men folk in, the, in their lives yeah. would not be able to read yeah. the messages. All my movies, I'm only interested in human relationships and human contacts with each other. Maybe that comes from, partially I'm maybe born with that, I'm very, very, I'm an observer, I'm very intrigued by that. And maybe partially it comes from this Quaker family uh, and, and the whole emphasis that they put on, on human relationships within the family, with other people, with society at large. And, and uh, I think that that had an influence. And the other thing that's very common in my films is the idea of an outsider. I mean, if you look at my films, there's always, uh, always either the main character is an outsider or that issue is, is dealt with quite a bit. So if you look at Smoke, when Dixie, it's always about you know, um, the one who's sort of not on the inside. So I've always seen myself as an outsider, you know, no matter where I was.